Ready? Ready. Go. All right, folks. All right. Another trailer park show. Feliz 16 de septiembre for those that are celebrating the uh, 16th I, I celebrate uh, Independence of Mexico. There you go. Yeah, this uh, is the real Mexican Independence Day. And we need to get uh, more and more commercial, more and more people locally, even businesses, to celebrate the 4th of July like they celebrate the 16th septiembre. Because you know when we had a 4th of July, kind of like, we all freaked out. Yeah, yeah. So... But do you know that we had over 8,000 people yes. celebrating Diaz y Seis right. at the Capitol? It was yes. one of the biggest crowds I've ever seen. What you're saying is when those 8,000 people, people come out and celebrate 4th <laughs> of July, maybe they will. Hopefully they will. Okay, anyway. Anyway, we have a <laughs> couple of state there. reps. Elliot, Nestat. Nestat. Uh, longest serving representative out of Travis County. And Representative Paul Wilson! Yay! The Republican, of course. That's why you gotta see you. Not Berkeley, you understand? <laughs> so what am I then? You're on the other he's side a, of the aisle. He's a Democrat. You can't even Democrat. say it, can you? You're the Democrat. <laughs> uh, the senior, probably about one of the senior ones in the whole house. Is there any in there longer than you? There are. There are about ten. I was oh, going to wow. say, what is your what is your seniority now? What you? I think it's. Well, a couple of folks are leaving, so yeah. it's 10 John Davis nine. was he, Was John Davis ahead of No, he no. wasn't. No. He was just a youth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so who's ahead of you that's going? Sinfronia Thompson. She's uh, not coming uh, back? No, no, no. Oh, who's leaving? Yeah, who's leaving? No, she's ahead of me in senior Oh, uh, yeah. Craddock's ahead of you. Thompson's ahead of you. But who's leaving this? That's ahead of me? Yeah. Any of your party leaving? Yeah, there are some. Who are retiring, but I don't know if they have more seniority. Craig okay. Island's leaving. Mark Strama has mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, we will have District 50 on the 30th. On the 30th, Rico Reyes. Rico Reyes and uh, Dr. Your folk. Vanderwally. Vanderwally. Your folk. Mike Vanderwally. Mm -hmm. that, that, your name was tough to say. Vanderwally. Uh, yeah, we have those two at least. <laughs> Probably some more, but we'll have those two at least. Can we come back? Sure. Uh, yeah, well, before the election, you certainly can. Sure, absolutely. Um, uh, speaking of your, if I can real quick, a lot of people get complained about my friend, the speaker there, Joe Strauss. But when you're senior, sometimes you have to put senior people in these uh, chairs on these committees. Because sometimes, they, why didn't he put more Republicans in chair chairmanships? Well, you have to put some Democrats there just because of seniority thing, if I'm correct. And I, I believe that's a good way to do it. But I do point out that he put a uh, high percentage, he put less Democrats, high percentage in chairmanships than he did, than there are percentage of Democrats in the House. But then they come back with, well, he put them in important chairmanships positions. Michael, can you repeat that again? I lost you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's oh. politics. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, give a little big speech. You see, you start first, and we'll let Mr. Workman Paul tell us up. Well, I thought I would share with you and the viewers Indeed. how I ended up in in Texas because I'm not a native-born Texan, and it's unusual to find someone like that serving in the Texas House of Representatives. So, did I mention that I'm from New York City? Well, you did now. I did. But we don't have any ropes, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so when I finished college... What part of New York? New York City. New York City. New York, New York City. City, okay. Yeah. Of course, if we were real familiar, we'd ask what part of New York City. Right. right. I'll be glad to tell you. All right. Queens. It's Queen. one of the counties. Tim one of the boroughs. Oh, okay. Kind of like Travis County. But New York City has five boroughs or counties, and I'm from one of them. So when I finished college back in the late 60s I signed up for the Domestic Peace Corps. Remember? Yeah, I remember the Vista, Peace Corps. Volunteers mm -hmm. in Service to America. I think you served in that. No, I served in the, I was on the USS Denver Dock. I watched lots of pots and pans during the Vietnam War on a big aircraft mm carrier. -hmm. Well, I signed up for Vista. John Kennedy started the Peace Corps when mm -hmm. people go overseas. Lyndon Johnson, as part of the War on Poverty, started Vista where people work in poverty areas in this country. And the people in Washington said, we'd love to have you serve in the Domestic Peace Corps. 
and they said because you're from a big city, New York City, we'll send you to a project in a big city, and they promised me an assignment in San Francisco. But you know the government. They lied. <laughs> and sent me... And you tell what? Sent me the Eagle Pass. Oh, Eagle Pass wow. Know where it is? Oh, oh yes. yes. Been there many times. The Lucky Buzzard down there. Have a... Uh, yeah, casino here in Texas. It's called the Lucky Eagle. I call it the Lucky Buzzard. If you've ever been there, you'll know why. It's the Lucky Buzzard. <laughs> so we went through training. Class 3 gaming. We went through Vista training for a few weeks in San Antonio. They taught us to be community organizers. Who's the most famous form of community organizer? Well, uh, I'm more into I'm just asking. I'm just asking. People who actually produced President them. Obama. President Obama. Bingo. So we went through training. And on the last day, the director pointed to four or five of us, all from the East Coast, had been promised assignments in San Francisco or Portland, and said, tomorrow morning, it's been a change. You all will be on a trailways bus to Eagle Pass. And we thought it was a joke. But it wasn't. And so the next morning, we were on this bus heading down to Eagle Pass. And it went for hours. It felt like it took three or four days. Mm. Hours and hours and hours. Time the interstate and then Highway 57. And none of us had ever seen that kind of South Texas scenery. What a shock that must have been, yeah. huh? I remember we saw some pavolina and some armadillo. Mm -hmm. And the bus kept going and going and going. And finally, on the outskirts of something, the bus stopped. Everybody got off except the new recruits. So I went to the bus driver. And I said, excuse me, sir, we're supposed to be let off at the downtown Eagle Pass bus station. <laughs> and he looked me in the eye and said, you put me on, boy, we were there. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, right. So after eliminating poverty in Eagle Pass, it took about a year, I ended up in, in Austin and got involved in local politics. Remember when Gonzalo Barrientos first ran Unfortunately, class? yes. I was a graduate <laughs> school. I, know, I, know. I was just asking a, a, well, I'll answer a question. No, no, I do. Uh, it was... Who is Gonzalo Barrientos? That's right. I That's remember right. way back when at Pan Am, they brought him over from Bastrop. Yeah. That uh, he was also a Vista volunteer. He had been one of my supervisors right, when right, I was a Vista right. volunteer. Mm -hmm. So I helped Gonzalo in his first race. He lost that one. He came back a couple of years later. And then after I went to school, some more school, graduate school here, uh, Barrientos ended up in the Senate. Correct. Remember? Mm -hmm. And he called me and said, Remember how we used to ride the range fighting poverty in South Texas? I went, yeah. He said, well, okay, I'm over in the Senate now, <coughs> and I need you to be my staff attorney. He said, I can pay you what we paid you when you were a VISTA volunteer, but I can get you a parking place near the Capitol. <laughs> and I did it, and I did that for three years, and that was about all I could take, and then I ran for office. And I ran against a three-term Republican incumbent, you may remember. I'll call him Bob. Okay, because that's his name, Bob Richardson. And it, it was a tough race, and it got really interesting because you must have heard what you were saying before. Because while I was going door to door, door to door, door to door, door to door, he had money, and he ended up going up on TV with a great commercial. A, a, it was a, a takeoff on the original Pace Picante sauce commercial. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you? No. Okay. New York? So th so the, yeah, or, the original, yeah, the original New commercial York. has um, <laughs> cowboys sitting around the campfire yeah, eating yeah. supper, and they run out of the pace hot sauce. So the cook brings some other kind, and one of the cowboys looks at the jar and tastes yeah. it and says, this ain't pace picante sauce. This stuff was made in New York City. Get a roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bob's <laughs> commercial. It was clever. It was really clever. Bob's commercial started off with the skyline of New York City, and the voice said, New York City, do you want a liberal social worker from New York City? Then the Pace Picante jar appeared on the screen with my photo <laughs> superimposed over the logo, and they got a lookalike cowboy from the real Pace ad, and he said, New York City, I'll bet he's for a state income tax. Income tax, <laughs> get a rope. Oh, wow. But you you give me got some elected? I got elected. You give me some ideas. Yeah, here. a liberal uh, uh, okay. social worker from New York in City. New York City. And Since I, 91, 92. 91. I took the oath the first time the same week that your good friend Ann Richards did. I've 
been reelected every time, and I've served and lived through the Ann Richards era, the George Bush era, and, and now the, the Rick Perry era. And it's been a quite a ride, and I think that your viewers want to hear a little bit from Representative Yeah, I'm sure, uh, sure I'm your, Apollo. Your story's much better than mine. <laughs> I've got more stories. I, I'm just an old rat contractor, been okay. building things all my life, and that's <laughs> what I am. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I was born in Texas, born in Corpus Christi, Texas, and raised down there. And, been in Texas all my life. And I'll be there in October for our LULAC state convention. Oh, is it going to be there? Our L executive board, yeah, in Corpus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The sparkling city by the sea? Yes, sir. That's right. It's Austin fun. used to be like Corpus. Yeah. Not no more. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> then I went to a and got my degree in construction science. I've been in the construction business all my life, and uh, it's all I've ever done. Uh, you asked me to build something, I can build it. I'm, I'm now you're there. running for your third term? I'm running for a third term, and uh, I've really, uh, it's been a great honor to, to be up there and serve, and I don't, I'm still learning a lot, there's still a lot to learn, and uh, uh, one day I may know half as much as Elliot does, and, <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not talking about belief half oh, the stuff, okay, yeah. I know half the stuff you know. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, it was a great session this year. We got a lot of stuff done. One of the things that we got done that's particularly good for <coughs> uh, Travis County and the city of Austin and all of the 10 counties in this area is we passed what was called the 911 Service District. And that is an incredible thing that we did. It's the first one in the state of Texas that's made up of more than one county. Mm. And, the, and it's, you know, CAPCOG, you may have heard that term, Capital Area Council of Governments mm -hmm. is a 10-county area, and uh, they ran a 911 system. But we were able to get a a bill passed and signed, which created a 911 service district for this 10-county area. <coughs> the important thing about it is that 100 cents on the dollar now will go towards 911. So the 50 cents that you're paying on your line, your telephone bill, used to go to the comptroller, and then the state would appropriate a portion of that, never all of it, and so what used to be about 75 cents, 75 percent coming now will be 100 percent, and what it means for our area is another two and a half million dollars towards 911 next generation equipment. So our 911 service is going to improve a lot here in our area. So that was a that was a big deal. And you agree with all that? <coughs> I guess you was this that, was a bipartisan type deal, I guess. Absolutely, it was a, Elliot it was a great bill, it. and we all we all supported it. I, I would like to say that I think most of your viewers know that Travis County has six legislators, mm -hmm. and five of them are, are Democrats, and one Representative Workman is a Republican, and it is always a pleasure to work with this man. He does a great job. Well, Thank you. Bring that up. Uh, Donna Howard uh, said no. Uh, Donna Dukes has been in an accident, and she's still not quite recovered, so she's not here because I didn't invite them all. I didn't expect them all to show up, but yeah. uh, so. Senator Watson. Don Donna Dukes was injured pretty bad. I think was she's it? doing better, but I think she had a pretty bad accident. But what I understand, she got rear ended. I think we also invited Eddie Rodriguez. We also invited Eddie Rodriguez, and he never even responded. Yeah, we always say in our community, McCallum has two state reps, state captains. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, Eddie Rodriguez. And how's that? So, well, they're original state rep and the one that's camping here. <laughs> Now, wait a second. Eddie Rodriguez <laughs> is observing the, as he says, the MP oh, yeah. today. Okay. He didn't come out to observe our 4th of July tomorrow. Well, uh, he didn't come to do no 4th of July. But anyway. That you're referring to. Uh, what, the parade? No. No, you said there were two. Oh, oh. oh. The elected state rep out of McCallum, the city, the, the area. Uh-huh. And then Eddie Rodriguez, he's from McCallum, oh. but he lives in District 51. Oh. So they <laughs> so have two reps. Out here, huh? <laughs> they have two reps. Uh, uh, Eddie, Eddie. Eddie told me he's from Brooklyn, New York. So yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I understand there are rumors out there that he'll be running for Travis County Commissioner Precinct 4. 
Oh, oh wow. is that right? Yes, because that pays one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Four <laughs> 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 okay. staff. I know I was there. Yeah, County Commissioner, Commissioner Mike was there. On. We were there. Uh, so who might be running for that? Eddie Rodriguez. That's what I heard. So that's the step up right. after all. Hmm? And probably less work too. Is that, the side that would be Margaret Gomez's spot. Correct. Is she Correct. not running? She's running again, but folks think that it's time for her to leave. And well, she's been there forever, and I thought she's doing a good. She's been at all her functions. Yeah, I mean, she's been on this show before. Yeah, personally, I don't think she needs to go. I mean, we had, we had Pickle do until he almost died, and we had other folks, you know. There's, but anyway, she she does a good job. She has a totally different style on the dais. She yeah. doesn't go crazy like, uh, you know, some of us do or whatever. She has kind of like a back, you know, kind of like. Uh, she's been she's been good to work with. I've oh, yeah. With her on some stuff. Yeah. She's uh, pretty reasonable. I would like she's to. No, she's no Ron Davis on the dais, let me tell you. Or or uh, our <laughs> friend, uh, uh, your, your friend, uh, Joe. Oh, Joe Battery. Battery, yeah. I like you, too. Yeah, but. I have to. <laughs> but, yeah, the county's a small world compared to the city and then and then the state but it's interesting the power the county has over cities you know that on health and all those kind of issues you the know hospital district and all that everything everything it gets above my head there though. so what do you see in government you say you've been a contractor for all your life what do you see in government that as a contractor as a business person as a fiscal conservative yes how, what do you see government Texas is already doing economically great. How do you see you for helping it continue to do so? Well, w you know, we do have a great state when it comes to business. And I think, you know, 1,200 people a day are moving into the state of Texas or some number around there. That's a lot of new folks moving in our state. And they're moving here because there are opportunities here. They're not moving here be be just for fun. They're coming here because there are opportunities. So we, we do have to make sure that we keep our state uh, wholesome and, 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 and good for business so that there's people that, that want it and our economy can stay strong and all of our people can can have jobs. Uh, so it, it is important that we, we do that and that's why you know I'm opposed to income taxes and raising taxes of any kind when you keep them low and, and predictable regulations is the other thing that's real important. I mean most businesses deal with regulations all the time. They just <coughs> want to know that they're there and know what they are and know that they're not going to change in three months and have to deal with changes and all that. So I can predictable talk that with dump trucks, you know. Predictable regulations are real important and everybody recognizes that we have to have some regulation mm -hmm. and but we just don't need to be changing it all the time. I see you're also <coughs> working on a little infrastructure out there at the uh, state forty five is it? You were uh, trying to work on and get done. SH right 45 Southwest. We're trying. We're trying to get that done, and it's moving forward. Actually, I think it might happen sometime in the next three or four years. So that really traffic. How about how about you, Elliot? What do you think you we can do? To <coughs> um, you say you had an interesting bill that you've been introducing the last four or five sessions. Yes, that's true. We what mm. bill is that? <coughs> Well, I have more than one interesting the, the very one interesting that <laughs> we all talked about. The one dealing with medicinal marijuana? Yes, sir. I wanted to ask you about yes. business. Yes. <laughs> you got a weird and weed head stuff. Okay, let's well, hear the weed head No, stuff. no, listen to what he said. Okay. Medical. Medical. Medical marijuana. You know how many people we'll have out there decide they have medical problems? We have them out there already. You know. They pay value. Let me, let me, pay let me tell you a story. Let Elliot tell about it, and then okay. I have a story. Okay. Let him work. And we'll get back to the economics of the state later. Okay. Um, this bill is very straightforward. First of all, it doesn't legalize anything. Okay. Nothing gets legalized. Marijuana is illegal. But what this bill <coughs> does is it sets up a process or a mechanism whereby if you have a legitimate bona fide medical condition like AIDS or cancer or multiple sclerosis and if your doctor suggests nagging wife no it's got to be a doctor says you know I can't prescribe it we have found and there are studies that marijuana can help alleviate 
pain associated with the diseases that I mentioned, I'm going to suggest that you try it because nothing else has worked. Can't prescribe it because it's illegal. So if you have a bona fide medical condition, okay. you're following a recommendation or a suggestion <coughs> of your doctor, and you get busted. Per this legislation, you can go into court in front of a judge and say, doctor, look at me. I have multiple sclerosis. I'm in a wheelchair. I'm not a criminal. My doctor suggested that I try it. This helps me live. This helps me work. And the judge, it's up to the judge, would be authorized to say, charge is dismissed. Go home. That's what the bill does. Not bad, huh? Okay. How could you be against that legislation? Uh, no, if he's that messed up, I guess, maybe, sure. But it'd be even better if I could get it for a nagging wife syndrome or, <laughs> you know, something like that. Nagging yeah, sister law syndrome. <laughs> so, uh, so, your feedback. Last year, <laughs> last year, I was at an event, and there was a young man there, uh, and struck up a conversation with him and asked him where he's from, and he said, well, I just moved here from San Diego. Mm. I said, well, that's interesting. What, what made you come to Texas? Well, I had to get out of there. Why? <laughs> we don't know where. I said, did you move here for a job? No, didn't have a job, just moved. Just picked up my family, my two kids, my wife, and we left. Why? Well, he said, there are more marijuana shops in San Diego than there are 7-Elevens. Mm. Mm. And mm -hmm. I would not raise my kid in that environment. And so he got out of there. And that's one reason why I'm opposed to... Uh, legalizing or or even allowing the sanction of it whatever you would call you were trying to do I, I just think it's a bad deal and um, I don't agree with him well wait but this bill it starts doesn't, out is doesn't change time. the law it, ah. it would still be illegal and we even put protections in the bill so that a doctor who simply suggests that you try it, it might help, can't get punished for violating his oath of medicine. Let me ask this question. Yeah. If that individual, again, has one of these illnesses, but is able to work, yeah. can work, how does that, how does the law deal with when that per Walmart, you have to take a drug test? Mm. McDonald's, you have to take a drug test. To get uh, uh, targets, you know, all those entities, all those to get any kind of benefits, you have to take a drug test. Right. Does this law address that issue? No, it does not. It, it does address the one where you go before the judge and whatnot. Well, the, all this says is that if you have a legitimate illness, illness, and your doctor has suggested that you try it, and you're doing that, sure, it may help you get to work. Some of them may say it helps me live. You can't imagine the debilitating pain. We ha finally got a hearing after mm -hmm. three sessions, and the people who testified, <coughs> their testimony was so compelling, and they weren't asking for any changes in the law. All they were saying was it would be nice to know that if cops come in to arrest me, I can say, look, uh, I don't misuse it. I'm sick, I'm not a criminal, my doctor suggested it, and they could go before a judge and say, Your Honor, and the judge, in many of those cases, would just have to take one look at him and say, well, well, Hold on here, Elliot, yeah. now. Well, I hope you don't hold go on, before now. a judge in Williamson County, because they're going <laughs> no, 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 I don't, I'm not an expert on cops or anything, but I can't hardly think of any cops I know that would actually want to bust somebody like that. Well, I if he goes in there and sees some old guy with multiple sclerosis or uh, yeah. in a wheelchair smoking pot on his porch, I really don't know any of them that's going to throw this guy in jail. Well, the reason I originally introduced this bill, which was three or maybe four sessions ago, because people who you're describing yeah. came to me and they testified the first time I had a hearing about four sessions ago and described exactly what you're describing. On his porch? They, they got busted in their house or on their porch. See, the other issue uh, that comes is, uh, let's say you live across the school. 
then you're on your porch smoking pot in a wheelchair across from the school. And then you have that law about, what is it, a thousand feet from the, the school? The cop's going to no tell you to go in your house. No gun zone, no drug zone. Yeah, right. thousand yeah the drug zone. zone. So sure. it's more than just one issue. So I, that's why I was kind of asking right. that. You know, I, I think it's better if we, if you're going to go that route, you know, I, I think that's a little cop out. I think we should just go ahead and, and decriminalize because there are some other issues, like you just said, the thousand feet from a school district. You have the issue of uh, if you employment. You know, you get drug tested, you know, that stuff is not going to work. If you're going to do it, then let's go ahead and do it and decriminalize it so that way people are able, you know, to do that. If, you, if we really feel that it does, it's not going to cause any, you know, any danger to society, um, it's, it's not worse than alcohol, then we should just go ahead and legalize it and decriminalize it. Well, I'm going to have to stick a call on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I don't do it, period, so I don't even Well, let's talk cigarettes. about the budget. Yeah, okay. let's, let's <coughs> go back. There's a lot of things did happen at the state. I thought we'd get in arguments about the abortion thing, not we, but... <laughs> uh, so I voted against the budget, and um, it was, I thought it increased too much, mm. and um, I just felt like that, that we went too far in some areas, so I, I voted against it. Like, like what areas? Well, a lot of different areas, but, uh, you know, we we put money in um, in, in various areas that that we didn't need to put as much as we did and so i just felt like it was the right thing to do was to vote against it like what areas are those well i th the budget's this or, thick yeah. Yeah. So yeah. But for example yeah. what, yeah. what, what yeah. kind of yeah what what issues you know came to mind to you said no no i'm not going to do this well there was, was there a specific one or well you know we refunded uh, refunded education pretty much put it back where it was we did what we had to do with with health care but there are other areas, in, in there are just a, mar a myriad of, of mm. various little things here and there that we increased that we probably just shouldn't have done. So, Elliot, how do you feel on the budget? I didn't see how you voted on it. I voted for it because we did restore a lot of the cuts from the previous session when we had a $27 billion shortfall. It's a lot of money. And the leadership said, to no one's surprise, we're going to live within our means. No new taxes, no tax increases, and you probably agree with <coughs> that. I was hoping we would generate some new revenues. And, for example, we underfunded public education two years ago by about $5 billion, and we underfunded Medicaid for poor people and elderly people, people with disabilities, by $4.8 billion. This session, we had a surplus, and we used some of that money to restore the cuts. But we still, for example, we have the highest rate of uninsured people in the nation. That's not good. But we they all the get treatment. If you walk in any... We have any a hospital district. Yeah, and problem. I want to, before I forget, I want to ask you, how, how did you plan to generate some additional revenue? you got to tax something somewhere. Well, there were lots of proposals, but they were all rejected. The ones that got some support were raising the, the gasoline tax mm -hmm. for the first time in 30 years. we got to say it. If you got it, a truck and brought it, every time you raise that fuel at a penny a gallon, a loaf of bread just went up. But let, let, me, anyway, an let me answer your question. Okay. Because leadership made it clear that there would be no new fees, no new taxes, no tax increases. And we offered, meaning the Democrats offered amendments, but we knew they wouldn't go anywhere. But here's an example of where money could have been generated. Hopefully next session it will. But we had an opportunity, and I know this is controversial, but it has to do with Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act. And the Supreme Court in upholding the constitutionality of that law said, well, there is one problem, though. You can't tell states. You can't mandate that states expand their Medicaid program. That's unconstitutional. So they made it optional. And Governor Perry said, well, we're not going to do it. And I introduced one of the bills that would have required Texas to participate in the Medicaid expansion. And I mentioned this because we're talking about the budget and money. By foregoing participation in the expansion of Medicaid, we turned down 91 
billion dollars in Affordable Care Act money over 10 years. But more importantly, remember I mentioned we have the highest rate of uninsured. Yep. We lost an opportunity to insure 1.5 million <coughs> low-income uninsured Texans. And from a strictly financial or budgetary perspective, to me, that doesn't make sense. Well, my problem is I don't trust the federal government. And I don't believe that they would go the full 10 years at 90 percent, first of all. Second of all, what do we do in 10 years when it all falls back to us? I mean, what's the budget going to look like then when we've added all these people and now we're going to be responsible for 91 billion divided by 10 is $9 billion more a year that the state of Texas, that's in today's dollars. 10 years from now, that's going to be 12 or $14 billion more that the state of Texas would have to deal with. Where is that yeah, money coming see, I, from? I, I disagree with your premise that the federal government would renege on its commitment to fund these programs. What is that based on? I, I'll have and to state that this is one of those dry subjects <laughs> that may be boring, but it's actually very, very important. To, it, we don't quite thank you all for coming down here and talking sure. like this. Sure. Because this really is a very important city. We're talking about a lot of money. And, and, and that's his money it is. And I think it's real important for the vote, the general voters out there to understand or get an idea uh, of how these gentlemen vote in their roles at the state capitol. And their and, thoughts on And their thoughts and where they're coming from and, and that way they can better understand uh, the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, well, can I say two things real quick? You can say more than that. Okay. And I think there's no reason to assume or to declare that the federal government wouldn't continue to pick up most of the costs. Okay, so that they do. You mean after 10 years? Yes. Well, because they haven't said they would. Well, no one's asked. Well. <laughs> well. Uh, the second thing, okay, okay. the second <coughs> thing is that you were saying that, well, people have. They can go they can get their care. But where, have to. where do most of the people who are uninsured end up going? They In the damn emerg uh, emergency room. Where, where it can cost eight Lots of money. to nine times more than if they had preventive care. And who pays for that? We do. We do. And, and so there's your solutions taxes to that. I think yeah. our Senator Donna Campbell, uh, one time I believe, uh, mentioned that we should have some kind of clinics out we, there. We have 27 or 28 clinics in Travis County, and and they are helping people all over that, that are going there instead of going to the emergency room. And we have a taxing district, that Central Health, that yeah. helps yeah. to pay for that. So. How, can we, how do we get these people out of the emergency room and into those? Because it is very expensive. I understand that part. Uh, right. Well, you know, not only that, clinics close at 5 o'clock. Mm. What happens if you have an emergency or a need after yeah. five or six? They're not there. So okay. all this, when I first, uh, well, by the way, I, I did oppose the Central Health District because of the tax issue. Uh, and uh, because <coughs> I personally, when I personally had an injury in 1980, when I was at BRAC for three months, and uh, I said, oh my God, these, these doctors, these people are so nice. Every day they come and peek in and what do you need? You, oh yeah, you sure are you all right? And I say yeah, I'm okay. Okay, well if you want TV, anything you want, I say man, I'm gonna enjoy this. I, you know, I was feeling better. Boy, when I got that bill, <laughs> that lady, sixty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Luckily, I was working with the city and I had insurance. But that's that the one thing that I have always asked the American Medical Association is the one of the biggest lobbying groups in DC and all that. They have never looked at costs or to reduce costs in the medicine field. And the more, when the Central Health District came about, I knew where it was going. Ten more. Maybe 10%, 5% to uh, help the poor, the indigent, the rest for capital investments. Look at the Taj Mahal they built on Cerza Chavez and uh, the Central Health District. Ran everybody out. Place. Yeah, we ca the old H-E-B. We can't, we're not going to take my clients no more because there's going to be our office. Boy, you walk in there, man, you can go throw a leak and it's probably the most expensive, you know, you can, you find a new York. Uh, but those are the kind of government abuses that, that I was talking about. Other that budgetary issues, uh, go ahead. Uh, we, you know, we're in Austin and with Austin, the, a lot of your people here, are, you have a lot of homeless. 
and we're not doing anything in Austin to deal with the homeless, and especially with this being such a, a liberal county. What can the know, state government do about this? Well, you know, uh, well, because it affects the entire. It's just part it, of it, it, it affects the entire state because in San Antonio, you'll have, uh, you know, what they do in San Antonio. What? When you you give go to jail ticket? in San Antonio, they give them bus ticket to Austin. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, I'll take it to San Francisco. I'll take it to the Boston. homeless mecca. You know, yeah. There's so many. Uh, I was observing this weekend as I was going to. Well, as a matter of fact, this morning I was leaving a friend of mine downtown. This homeless guy, you know, with his blanket under ice 35. But not all of them are home ho homeless. Some of them are home homeless because they want to be home, or there's kind of like a fad, or you know, something yeah. like that. And I know there's uh, a lot of street kids out there. Oh yeah, a lot. So, yeah, it's, you know, get that bus ticket to Austin. Well, well now for the state budget. And I went to Laredo. I didn't see no homeless people there. In Laredo? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, in Laredo, Texas. I seen one down there before. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about water? I yes. want to talk about education and water, too. All right. We're, uh, we're going to have a big problem with water. All we right. don't do something real quick. Yeah, we, we don't have no water. We, with we, the budget as well. We need to get a rope or do something to get well, a pipe we could and get all that rain Michigan and pull it in from Michigan because we're well, have we could get all that rain Mexico's getting right now because of that hurricane. On better as long as they put their share back in the Rio Grande, we'll do all right. We're gonna get rain this week. That's part of the other water. My friend Monterrey said it's pouring. It's, it's, it's not. Gonna, yeah, yeah, but it's not gonna be enough. We're gonna have to no. do something with water. We're gonna. We need to do something with uh, maybe trying to pull something from the ocean um, and work with it that way because we're gonna have a serious problem. Well, you know, in Puerto Rico, they uh, they clean the water from the ocean to use to irrigate right. the whole island. Go ahead, Paul. Well, uh, I was just going to talk. We have a constitutional amendment coming up that's going to put a couple of billion dollars into what's being referred to as a revolving fund. Mm -hmm. And what it'll allow a municipality to do would be to go and get a short-term loan out of this revolving fund to help jumpstart a project. So if they need to do engineering or they need a land acquisition, project. they could get some money like this and when they get the project ready, then they sell bonds and they get the longer term financing. And so it's going to be real important that we vote for this bond proposal um, or this uh, constitutional mm -hmm. amendment. Take over. I'm fixing to sneeze. And what I want to, I, 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 have, I have something to ask you, you know, what do you think that's going to do with our water rights <laughs> and how's that going to affect, you know, there's a lot of counties, uh, you, Elliot, like for instance, well, like for instance, Bastrop County, those citizens of Bastrop are concerned with uh, some of the water rights. They're concerned with them losing their water rights. Any thoughts on that? Well, Elliot, Go ahead, Elliot got any? On water rights? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we need to make sure that we protect the rights of people, but this two billion dollars is going to go toward infrastructure dealing relating to water problems all over the state and a lot of the decisions are going to be made at the local level so if the legislature has to come back and revisit some of these issues if some of these problems do develop that's what we do but right now assuming that the voters of texas approve this proposed constitutional amendment it will put a big dent in this problem that we're facing, as everyone knows. And are, are we both on that ad hoc committee mm -hmm. to, to help promote this? Because yeah. it's it's so important. With, with all with a lot of right 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 Money in the fund would be administered by the Texas Water Development Board and would be used to implement the state water plan as adopted by general law by the Texas Water Development Board. The proposed amendment will appear on the ballot as follows. The constitutional amendment providing for the creation of the state water implementation fund for Texas and the state water implementation revenue fund for Texas to assist in the financing of property projects in the state water plan to ensure the availability of adequate water resources. And y'all think we should vote yes on it? It's a four. You should, you should uh, the, the citizens need to support this. They do. And you agree, Elliot? Absolutely. It, it's a start. It's a very important start. And, and go, go look at Lake Travis if you want to understand. <laughs> I was uh, talking about Lake Travis. I was at the Alexis um, <laughs> last Thursday night. And 
looking out at Lake Travis and how low it was. And so I went on the, <laughs> my iPhone and looked up LCRA to see say? what it was. One year ago, it was 15 feet higher. Then. So it was down 15 feet in one year. That's a lot of water. That is a lot of water. And we need to try to make sure that we preserve. We, we have cut off the rice farmers downstream, which is very important. And LCRA is working on some downstream Those reservoirs. rice farmers sell rice worldwide. A lot of people don't understand that. If I'm correct, I believe I am. Mm -hmm. Texas rice <coughs> is all over the world. And it all comes out of water from Colorado River. Well, it, it, it is an important industry to our state. There's no question about that. But um, we, we've hand, got to maintain uh, adequate water supply for the citizens up here. Now, earlier we mentioned education. You know, with um, uh -huh. a lottery, uh, I thought originally the money from the lottery, you know, a lot of that's supposed to go to education. And I'm just wondering where is that money going? It's going to education now. If it's going to education, then why do we need more money for education? Because well, there's a lot of lottery money. Okay. There's about that much lottery money going to education, but the education budget is about that big. That's the problem. Originally, a decision was made by the legislature not to earmark or dedicate the lottery money to education. The fear was that exactly what you're saying. People would assume we've taken care of it. But there was so many expressions of concern when the public found out that the money isn't dedicated to education. We went ahead and dedicated it to education, knowing that we would get that kind of question. Well, it's I was under the impression that initially when we came out with the lottery, that money was, that was the whole debate, you know, on the floor. It was that money's going to go to the lottery. And so now we've kind of reneged a little bit. Well, no. The bill that passed... The amendment, the constitutional amendment, did not dedicate the money to education. Everyone thought it did, but it did not. We came back a few years well, later. It was one of those fine print things. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and, well, <laughs> and what Elliot said is true. I mean, there's about a billion dollars <coughs> yeah. that comes into the state treasury from the lottery, mm -hmm. and the education budget is $47 billion. Mm -hmm. So it's a very small portion of the overall education budget. So and small, I, I believe yeah. we ought to do away with the lottery because yeah. yeah, I think it's indeed. hard on poor folk. And, and we're having the same concerns with respect to the proposed constitutional amendment to <coughs> put, what is it, $2 billion into transportation mm -hmm. and roads. Is that coming up on this? Not, not this year. It'll okay. be up in 14. Years later. But there are concerns that people will think if that passes, we've solved all the road problems. But in fact, <laughs> The department says it needs, what, $4 billion a year? Um, and this is going to be about one. I think we'll do yeah. fine in Travis County if we start spending all that money on the, the uh, uh, what is it, bike lanes? We and didn't actually fix Yeah, well, yeah, that's a city thing. We didn't get cover enough <laughs> education. I like we're going to run out of time. And this infrastructure is important because I understand that the roads around there really are paid with gold because yeah. it's extremely expensive. Now, speaking of uh, education, though, a quick question. Uh, right. what, what about this in, impeachment of the, the uh, going on at UT? Any thoughts on that? And how that's a hearing gonna, today. How that's going to affect uh, President Powers, and you think that we're... Just the related to the state government somehow? Or yes, it is, because there's, it is, there's yeah. a hearing. Oh, yeah. Yes. They had a hearing today. They had a hearing today. I was there's gonna a go, big but controversy I over some of the members of the Board of Regents. And oh, <coughs> okay. He went to college in New York City. I did. But I went to graduate school at the University of Texas. Oh, okay. So I, go ahead. So I speak with authority. I <laughs> had an egg, Aggie shirt on. That's even sure. better. But it's my Aggie shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to build Let's up. Let's talk about Aggie football. <laughs> <laughs> we did pretty good this weekend. Sure did. Absolutely. We scored 42 points on the number one team in the nation. <laughs> and still lost. You guys have a great call. Uh, yeah, we do. Anyway, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I, I guess I, I brought it up with it. Never mind. All I want to say is Texas Tech did a great job this weekend. They they held that name down and made Texas look great. They did. <laughs> uh, where were we? Well, I'm, uh, I'm kind of glad that Texas was reminded. I, it reminds me of that old 
movie uh, that they put out, uh, in, was it in L.A.? Uh, one, 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 one Day Without a Mexican or Immigrant, or what is it? Uh, 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 a Day Without Mexicans. A Day Without Mexicans. So Mac Brown had a Saturday Without a Mexican. So he what quite happy. Mm. 44. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so back to the, the <laughs> UT. <laughs> 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 you, you didn't talk about football. Okay, I was so, trying to change the <laughs> So back to the UT impeachment. So. Okay. Well, first of all, you can't impeach Will the, that help him the, win? the head coach. Okay. I checked. <laughs> I checked. The head coach right, is safe. Right, right. But you've got, you've got this board of regions, and there are these accusations that a couple of members of the board of regions have been trying to micromanage the University of Texas, and... It became a big deal during the last session because there are many strong supporters of the University of Texas, of Bill Powers, of Shigaroa, uh, the chancellor, and there are some who have some problems. But a decision was made to look into whether or not one member of the Board of Regents has overreached in terms of his job and responsibilities and the leadership of the legislature said, well, why don't we appoint a transparency committee to, amongst other things, look at this. And they will make a report, and there is a possibility, and this would be the first time in the history of this state, that a member of the Board of Regents could be impeached. I don't know how that would play out. <laughs> no, that's what I'm so lost in all this, too. Okay. You right. asked. I tried to answer. No, I think he asked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I don't okay. think there is a tool, is there, to impeach a board of regents? It's a well, point, uh, appointee. For one, they're unpaid. So, well, that position well, that they're trying to... it's an appointment. Right, it's an appointment, and it's unpaid. It would have to go back to the Senate, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would have to go back to the Senate yeah. to have that individual... So it's uncharted uh, territory. Uh oh we got about 10 minutes, so... Uh, we talked real, uh, real quick about HB 5. The education bill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was it five or two? Five. 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 It, yeah. That that bill, which I supported and I'm real excited about, it represents potentially a mm -hmm. sea change in how our high school students get out of high school. Hmm. <coughs> it's going to. No longer will you get a diploma. You're going to get what they refer to as a foundation certificate, and then you have to earn an endorsement on top of that. So you can't just get out with a foundation certificate. You've got to have foundation with one endorsement. So it might be a fine arts endorsement or a math science endorsement. And what I was particularly excited about, an industrial endorsement, which is vocational education. Right, right. So for the first time in some time, we've now refocused our energy on vocational education, which I think is critically important. So many students I agree. Who, who know they're not going on to college now have got something they can look at and say, I can get an industrial endorsement and I can use that when I get out. I think it's a fantastic deal and I'm so excited about it. I hope that, that the school districts fully implement it. Um, another part of that legislation deals with the inordinately high number of standardized tests that kids in school had to take. It was 15, and I, I don't think it was a unanimous vote, but most of us voted in favor of cutting that 15 number down to five. Right, to five. <coughs> that's a step in the right direction. I don't, th I don't, think, I don't think we would need that much money. I don't think, I, think I don't think we'll need that much to go toward education if we give parents uh, the opportunity to choose and give them choice and, and where they want to send their kids to school. I, I think that would solve um, some of the problems. You're not talking have. the V word here, are we? I just said choice. Uh, can I talk about? Yeah, we, we, we're, we're, we're talking on. about a grant. It's called a grant. What's the name of it? It's not a voucher. It's a grant. <laughs> yeah, we're not using the word voucher. We're, we're I didn't say that. You said that. On, uh, right. You said that. You said that. I said choice. Right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. Education has changed so much from way back when. And that's where we find many of our students, 15, 16, that are all social media and whatnot, they get bored in the classroom. So it's not challenging enough. And I don't know when the curriculum is going to, you know. Well, this SP5, uh, this 
I spell five he's talking about maybe just what's needed to get some gold to shoot at maybe. Well, there's also there was also a bill uh, that passed that increased the number of charter schools. So we're going to continue to increase charter schools to work on more school choice stuff. So I I think there's some stuff that's going on. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, because under LULAC National, you know, National, they uh, we're nonpartisan and we always work with Republicans, Democrats, Green Party, whatever. Libertarians. And libertarians. Okay. Uh, <laughs> any any party. Uh, also in education. We work with public schools, we work with private schools, we work with charter schools. And, you know, if you take AISD, for example, AISD locally here in, in yeah. most of everyone's backyard here, policymakers and whatnot, there's no reason why that school should have been failing for the last 15 years. We have the University of Texas, we have St. Edwards, we're one of the largest academic communities. Right. Trans and you look at that and you, you, you kind of think, wait a minute, what, what's going on? You know, why is it that this is occurring? And uh, that's why many children that live in that uh, school zone and have parents that did go to school, uh -uh, I'm not sending my child over there. They're moving out and they're going to charter schools. That's the biggest percentage of, uh, the wish the, of students that are leaving. A look, at, look at IDEA. They took 700 students from AISD and and okay. speak in speaking of choice you know I'm actually happy with the legislator this session <laughs> and what they did with abortion um, because you know I think of individuals who oh, okay, I, knew we had to go uh -oh. later, huh? <laughs> I think of individuals who you know who have sex and could you know possibly contract HIV you know your choice is either to not have sex or to use contraception well, that's not much about the abortion thing, but okay but well, that's I, I can just see that's like a reasonable other, thing, 20 yeah. weeks, that's like damn near five months. If the you other, know, you the other fine, uh, <laughs> topic, I don't know if it happened, in, yes it did, in the legislature was gun rights. Right. Well, we got about seven minutes, so. Well, well there's something that happened this week, and that was uh, you had several people that were open carrying uh, black rifle, I'm sorry, black powder revolvers. Uh, walking toward the Capitol where, where the DPS troopers actually arrested those individuals. Um, and, and, and for people that don't know, black powder revolvers are actually legal in Texas. Actually, you can be a felon and actually purchase a black powder, black powder uh, revolver. Uh, so um, they shouldn't have been arrested. It's just uh, something it's not that illegal. the legislature black could be against? Or revolver. revolver. Correct. Yes, sir. How do you have a black powder revolver? No, that's Civil what War, uh, six well, I mean, shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I've off. never seen one. <coughs> the, only, the, only, the only meaningful thing we did uh, with Second Amendment rights was that we, uh, we passed legislation that uh, took care of the inadvertent display of your weapon. Like if, you're if a shirt happens to blow open in the wind and your jacket life. comes open, it's, uh, you wouldn't technically be in violation of the law. You're not meaning to brandish. Yeah. The wind blew my shirt open. Hear that, Miles? Well, so quick well, 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 what happened to that? I mean, the days where you could ha have your rifle in the back of your truck. Well, well, not you exactly. You, you, you want to steal it. Can we so still do that? You can still do that. You can open carry your, your a lone gun is what they call it. There's you can been people doing that right there at Congress Avenue right. carrying AR-15s up and down the street just to prove they can do it and it is your right. It's legal in the in the Texas Penal Code. There was one bill that didn't end up passing, and I may be the only one who is opposed to authorizing students to carry oh, yeah. guns I remember on that campuses. But that, that's a very hot debate, and some of us thought the government might put it on the call of the special session, and that's something that generates a lot of interest and a lot of emotion. Yes, I can understand uh, you wouldn't want a <coughs> bunch of youngsters carrying guns around, but and, I was thinking the, the, the faculty or staff. And yeah, that's really not about putting guns on campus. That's about allowing CHO holders, people that are 21 and up, being able to carry where they can carry everywhere else in the state of Texas. You know, those same individuals will allow them to carry at grocery stores, movie theaters, restaurants. We're saying that they should be allowed to carry, you know, on that same facility, true. you know, on, on a college campus because, you know, they're not going to all if of a sudden. If you make a load into uh, the car with your truck, do I got to hide my gun or? Right. I had a, one of my staff members um, 
who graduated from college just a year or so ago was telling me in, in his support for campus carry that he, he went to Texas State and was in a classroom one day and they've got some kind of an alarm system that goes off that says there's an intruder or and he he told me he said I remember thinking I'm done if that guy busts in this room there's mm -hmm. nothing I can do because I don't okay. and he was 21 and a uh, CHL holder but he couldn't carry on campus and he felt helpless in the fact that there was a real alarm and he had no idea whether or not it was you know going to happen in his like classroom. I know, right? Slow down. And, and and we need to remember those people. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, we need to remember those people today oh, in, in yeah. D.C. You know who lost their life in D.C. Oh, because there's, an act, minutes, so. there's an active shooting there in D.C. <coughs> in, in the same situation, it was a, a, a gun-free gun school zone. I mean, a gun-free zone. Well, uh, take a minute. I'm going to give each of our candidates a minute. I mean, uh, uh, well, I guess our candidates. Because we're rest. Our, our we got three minutes. So say something. Our, yeah. our, our local state reps. Well, thank you very much for having us again, Pokey. We enjoyed uh, coming on. Wish we had more time. And uh, we look forward to going back this session. If the citizens will allow me, I want to go back and continue the work that I've started and, and do some things for uh, the city of Austin <laughs> and, and uh, Travis County and the, dis the citizens of District 47 so that we can make Texas uh, continue to make it a better place. You're running unopposed, I guess. Uh, Usually. He always gets a libertarian, right? Yeah, <laughs> <He always> libertarian. <laughs> so I, I, I hope that whoever turns out to be the legislative leaders um, next session, and there's a good chance that Craig Abbott will be our next governor, but there's a remote chance that it could be uh, Wendy Davis, although she has not declared that she's running. But I hope that, that our leaders would look very carefully at areas of the state that I certainly believe should be more adequately funded whether we're talking about education, health, human services, there are many arenas. And obviously to make that happen, legislators and the leadership have to be ready to bite the bullet, so to speak, and look at ways to generate more income, more money for these programs that help people who need a little bit of help from their government every now and then. I hope that happens. Well, I want to commend both of y'all because public service is a uh, very unique and special uh, service and not too many people do it. And it's a lot of sacrifice Three because seconds. you're always away from your families. And, uh, but uh, I want to commend both of y'all for taking that, that bold step and, and serving the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, stay tuned to here, folks. We'll be, uh, there's plenty of good shows right here on this station. We'll be back next week. Uh, Travis County Taxpayers Union, and on the 30th, we'll have District 50 people. Uh, again, appreciate y'all coming on, and we'll have this up on YouTube. Uh, good night, everybody. See you on next Monday. <laughs>